Let's go now to uh, Mayor Jim Kenney. He's uh, in City Hall right now. I guess the mayor's not ready right now. Uh, Coulter, by the way, is a three-star deputy who most recently served as a deputy commissioner of organizational services. Among her duties, Coulter oversaw the use of technology to improve community policing. Uh, let's go to the mayor now. I'd like to recap some of the events that have transpired over the last 48 hours or so. On Monday evening, Commissioner Ross tendered his resignation to the managing director. Brian and I told him that we wanted to revisit it the next day. In a serious decision for, it's a serious decision for a police commissioner to resign. The role is one of, the, of our most important, if not the most important appointee we make. It's a very difficult job and he's been a great leader for the department during his tenure. Last week, uh, under fire was a prime example of that. We have revisited again yesterday by phone. He still wanted to resign and ultimately I accepted his resignation because we both agreed it's the best course of action for the department at this particular time. We've appointed Deputy Commissioner Coulter as acting commissioner effective yesterday. She's had a distinguished career and a great resume and I'm confident that, that her past experience will make her a great leader during this transition. The search for a new commissioner will begin soon. We're looking broadly, local and national, internal and external. We're seeking a commissioner who can garner respect from the rank and file and from the community, just as Richard Ross did. Someone who is committed to building a stronger department, bolstering morale, and addressing the workplace challenges that have existed within law enforcement for some time. I can't comment and I won't comment on the specific allegations of the federal complaint, but I'll open up to other questions now. And there are two wireless mics that we're using for questions, so please wait your turn and someone will pass around the mics to you. So, yes. This isn't the first complaint of right. sexual harassment or mistreatment in involving city employees or the police department. Why now and what are you doing now to move forward in connection with all of the other criminal activities going well, on with the city? Well, we have instituted a pretty expansive uh, um, uh, directive on how these complaints should be handled. Uh, and we're moving forward from there. I mean, some of the past allegations took place outside of this administration, um, and we're moving forward and, and going to address it in a holistic way uh, and try to abide by the directive that we put in place. Um, the pr uh, process for the search for a new commissioner, will it be a national search? And the Rally for Justice Coalition has made some demands about inclusion of community viewpoints um, in that Well, we, we, you know, when I first asked Commissioner Ross to serve, he actually was my only choice at the time. Um, I had watched him from city council and respected his abilities, and uh, I really had no other candidate in mind. Uh, and we did go to the community. We had, as a matter of fact, I think the, the day we announced his appointment, uh, I, and I remember recalling this myself, that it was, it was significant that, re, uh, that Minister Rodney Muhammad and John McNesby were both standing next to Commissioner Ross when we announced that he was going to become the commissioner. So we would seek, certainly seek input from various sectors of our community, both the clergy and advocates and people who are active in criminal justice reform and act, active in, uh, in policing. Uh, we'll, do, we'll look nationally, we'll look internally, and we'll, look, uh, we'll find the best candidate. Mr. Mayor, you, in, you indicated a moment ago that it, it, what it sounded like was that you uh, were, that, that Commissioner Ross said he was going to resign. You attempted to maybe talk him out of it or well, at least it wasn't, confident of his it decision. It didn't get to that. I, I wasn't aware um, of all the details of what was going on. I happened to be, I was a... I had taken a couple days. I taken a couple days off, and I was away. And I just came back today. Um, and I wanted to get. I wanted to talk to staff. I wanted to talk to managing director. I wanted to talk to chief of staff to find out what all was going on. So I just said, you know, hold up a minute, just till we figure out what's going on. And then the next day, when we had the conversation, he was firm in, in his decision. And um, I, you know, after after the wonderful after the wonderful performance last week of our people and him leading that. I, we had the press conference here, uh, was it this week or last week? I forget. Uh, Thursday. Um, I, looked, I asked him, I said, are you okay? He said, no, I'm tired. I'm like really tired. Uh, and I think that's, that's, I think, part of what this all culminated in. And um, I think he made the, made the right decision for, uh, for the department and for the city. But I don't want to over. I don't want to forget all the positive things that happened during this three and a half years. I mean, if you look at the DNC and, and the operations there, if you look at the NFL draft, if you look at the Eagles parade, if you look at the transparency he's created within the department, we're reporting on pedestrian stops. And I mean, there's so many. And he's not hesitant. He wasn't hesitant to fire officers that that did that did misdeeds uh, and and was not. After what you know now, is it appropriate? 
After, given what you know now, is it appropriate that Richard Ross be gone as commissioner? It was his decision to resign, and I think he made the right decision. It is appropriate that he's now gone. He's made the right. He made the right decision for himself and for the city. Hi, Mayor. Uh, just two questions. One is a quick one. What is the the expected time frame of the independent investigation? And because other offices are named in this suit, including the woman who will be replacing uh, Ross, are there any remedies that are going to be taken in the interim? The other question is. Uh, the lawsuit says that uh, Corporal McCallan was told that as a supervisor, she cannot be harassed by a subordinate. Do you agree yeah, with I'm, that I'm not concept? Going to get, I'm it's not, not about the lawsuit, it's about a general concept. Do you believe that a supervisor can be harassed by a subordinate? Of course. But I do, I don't, I, I'm not going to specifically com uh, comment on anything that's in litigation at the moment. It just wouldn't be appropriate, and my lawyer would tackle me if I try to. And the independent uh, investigation time frame and any other yeah. remedies being taken in the meantime against other name uh, officers? And, and just to be clear, the, the th a third party that is, is going to look at, uh, at the police department and isn't necessarily uh, investigating these claims specifically, but uh, will likely look at a, uh, other issues within the department. Uh, so, you know, the law department is looking at the uh, looking at these specific allegations as part of the lawsuit, um, but the third party is is uh, is going to be looking at, at uh, broader issues, um, similar to what we did around the, the Facebook. We don't know how long. Uh, we do not know how long that'll take right now. Mr. Mayor, I spoke to a few community leaders today who expressed some concern around the potential lack of diversity in your next choice, and particularly they're concerned or interested in whether diversity uh, will be a priority in your pick for, or your search for police commissioner. Diversity is a priority at all of what we do. Um, I mean, obviously I'm acutely aware of the fact that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a white male, uh, and I do have concerns about how the optics of, of diversity need to be maintained. We need to make sure that we get as a good pool of people, but as diverse pool of people as possible, and we will be looking at that as part of our consideration. Uh, Christine Coulter is named uh, as the new acting interim commissioner. Is there a concern there because she's also named within this particular lawsuit? Um, I don't, I mean, Marcel, I don't know if you, I mean, it's, it, it, it's got to do with the litigation, so I want to make sure that we answer appropriately without me making a mistake. Yeah, Marcel Pratt, city solicitor. Um, short answer is we're not going to comment on uh, the allegations in the complaint, but the administration has full confidence in Commissioner Coulter. Mr. Mayor, you where's that coming? I'm sorry. Oh, you, get... you said in your uh, in your statement last night that you believe the department needed new leadership. You were pretty firm in the way you stated that. What changed between Monday night when you took the phone call and didn't accept his resignation well, and it wasn't, Tuesday it wasn't, when you issued that statement? It wasn't that I didn't accept the resignation. I didn't have all the information I needed in, an, in order to understand fully what was going on. So I wanted to wait 24 hours or 12 hours, 15 hours beforehand. I think that you know, based on what has been already reported in, in the news, that uh, it was an appropriate time to, to for him to move on for himself, for the city, for the department, uh, and, um, and that's what he did. And can you say when you first learned of the allegations in this lawsuit? I knew about the, I knew about the allegations in uh, in the original lawsuit, but I didn't know about the amendment until he told me, and he called and told me about the amended version of the of the, the complaint. He, you, that came from him to me personally. Can you say what he told you when he offered um, to resign? No, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's personal and. Not going to do it. How do you move forward now in trying to solve the crime, the gun violence, the other issues within the city? And Commissioner Coulter, are you going to be applying for the position permanently? Well, Is this a job before, before the commissioner answers, I mean, obviously we're struggling with this. I mean, there's guns within our society, way, way too many. Uh, poverty is an issue. Opioids are an issue. There are things that we could use some help from, uh, for, from Washington and from Harrisburg that we don't get. Uh, so we're, we're struggling every day to find strategies to reduce and limit the amount of gun violence and homicide. Uh, it's not the, the, the you know, the homicides are troubling. One homicide is one homicide too many, but we're certainly nowhere near uh, some of the numbers that, that happened back in the 90s and prior to that even. Um, so we, 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 it, any amount of homicide is unacceptable, and we're going to continue to fight to keep that down and to try to get guns out of people's hands, to get people working, to get people drug treatment. I mean, a lot of this stuff that slides downhill is all on us. Uh, and, um, you know, well, you know, again, I get criticized for talking about Washington, but we're not getting any help on any 
level on opioids or on guns or on anything else. So um, we're, we're, we're doing our best. We have great commanders. Obviously, our commissioner is an uh, extremely qualified individual. All the people that will be working with her are, are the same people that were working with Commissioner Ross uh, come uh, last Wednesday night. Um, and, and we're able to uh, guide our way through that uh, serious situation without loss of life, including the shooter. Um, so, I mean, I think, that the, I think that this department and the commissioner and all the command staff need to be kind of applauded for their, their efforts. Um, again, no, nothing's perfect. We make mistakes, uh, and we try to correct those mistakes moving forward. Can we ask the commissioner um, how it feels to be the first woman to lead this department under these circumstances, and um, do you plan any changes, any immediate changes? Well, we're only about a half a day into this process, so um, there's a lot going on, but I have been, always been honored as both a woman and a police officer to serve the city, and I look forward to doing that moving forward. What I would like to change, and we all would, is the level of violence in the city, and we will work tireless to do that. I'd like to change and improve on relationships with our community, with our partners. They're all things that we strive to do every day, and we'll work harder every day to accomplish that. But at the end of the day, you really have to look at things from the seat that you're now in. I sat in organizational services, I looked at my job, I supported the commissioner and everything that he needed, but now I have to look through a different lens of being able to manage the entire department. So I will take that hard look, make sure that the right folks are in the right place and that we're structurally organized to be the most effective department that we can be. And will you apply for the job of commissioner? I would love to continue serving the city. That's all I can tell you right now. Okay. Uh, Mayor, over here. Yes. It sounds like you were at least a little bit reluctant to accept his resignation. As far as reforming the culture of sexual harassment that uh, a lot of the female officers over the years have been complaining about in the department, what kind of message does that send um, about, you know, how you will choose the next leader if you were reluctant to what, dismiss him. What message is that? I don't understand. It's like, I don't um, understand if you were reluctant to accept his I, resignation look, after these I've, allegations I've, came to light. I've worked, look, there are allegations, I've, and allegations need to be proven. I've worked with him for three and a half years. I've worked with him before I was mayor. Uh, I don't like to see anybody lo lose their job or resign from their job. I mean, it's not my, it's not my nature to, to be happy about that. Um, but he decided, and he was very firm in his decision, uh, and he decided that that was best for him and his family and the department at the moment. But I, I'm generally hesitant. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't fire people well, and I wasn't obviously firing him because he decided on his own. And I, 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 I'm glad he made the decision he made. I was hesitant just out of human, just out of human feeling. And will addressing this issue of sexual harassment in the department be a, a top priority for you as you choose the next commissioner? Well, it, it is, and it will be. Um, and again, we've done this citywide uh, new directive, uh, how these complaints should be handled. Uh, and um, we're going to continue to try to improve and take advice from various organizations and people who deal with this all the time and, and be the best that we can be. I mean, you know, not, not, policing's not perfect, life's not perfect, it's hard. And, and we're going to try with our best foot forward to make it better. And lastly, one more thing about the next police commissioner. How important for you as you're looking for someone is uh, their commitment to criminal justice reform or some of the newer ideas that, for instance, the district attorney that has will be That will be part of the decision-making process. Obviously, um, you know, change is difficult, especially when there's been structural change that's been in place for decades. Um, it's hard to change people's views on things. Uh, but you're, you have to be willing to try and explain to people the, why we need to go in the right direction, why, why locking everyone up doesn't always work um, and hasn't worked. Uh, and why we need to be more understanding of, of the whole system as it works, not just the police so, as a silo, but how the courts work, how the prison system works, how the education system works, and to try to get people to a, to a point where they can actually achieve and meet their potential uh, without being sidetracked. Mayor, how does this case relate in the back? How does this case relate to the 2017 case? There was a Vandergrift case settled for over $1 million against the city of Philadelphia? Under our advice from the... Uh, there you go. We're not going to comment on that. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, yes. Mayor, can, can you explain why there's still no centralized process for harassment reporting in the city? Well, I, I, there is, so there is centralized reporting. Uh, we've made a decision that every department's a little bit different. And um, 
each department does investigate harassment on a, on a pretty regular, regular, rigorous way, and, and then those uh, results and those findings are reported centrally. Um, there's, there's a, you know, we take this issue just as seriously as the city controller does. We, this mayor has acted very strongly to, to root out sexual harassment in our city, um, not just in the police department, but in all of our departments. Um, there are multiple, multiple roads to get to the same, to get to the same end. Um, and uh, at this point, um, as we will continue to review all of our policies, just like we always do to make sure that, that they're appropriate, um, but we feel like we have strong policies in place and we're going to continue to, to, to uh, address these issues. Can, can you tell us how much of the city, how many city employees, how, what percentage of the city employees and management has gone through sexual harassment training? I can't tell you that today. Um, we can certainly take a look and, and get back to you. Is that, is that required? Yes, sexual harassment training is required. Yes, Walt. Mayor, um, is it fair to categorize Commissioner Ross's resignation from your perspective as coming out of left field? Were you stunned by it? Or is it something you saw um, coming? Partially, yes, but partially not. I mean, I think that he's, it's a hard job. I mean, and it's, it's a stressful job. And it's sometimes a job that is, you know, it's a thankless job because you're never ever perfect. You never do exactly what people expect you to do. And I, and I, I know how seriously and how, inter how he internalized this job. And after a while, I find myself sometimes doing the same thing. And people have to tell me, no, don't take everything so internal. Um, but I think that gets to you after a while. And you need a break. You need something different. And uh, I'm sad to see him go. I think, as I said earlier, I said I think he made the right decision for himself, for his family, for the city, for the department. But it's not, it's not a happy day. I mean, I think he did a stellar job. And I think the people that he put in place to help him do the job, people he's promoted um, have, are, are top-notch people and uh, we're going to continue to try to to live up to that even with our even with our faults even with our flaws we're going to try to continue to make it better but I think this department generally is left in better shape um, before since he got here and when he left Mr. Mayor, in relatively short order, this department has been rocked both by a social media, if we want to call it that, scandal in which a, a significant number, obviously not a majority by any stretch, but a significant number of officers were involved in some pretty horrific behavior. And now this case in which not one or two, but a, a significant number, again, not dozens, but a significant number of people are alleged to have been involved in behavior that most folks would find pretty reprehensible. How concerned are you at all about the broader culture of behavior and professionalism within a department that by and large, obviously, he does great work, but you've got to be a little concerned about this I stuff. mean, obviously, I'm concerned about the department, but I think we can follow this type of behavior throughout life. Uh, I look, look no other than, than 100 or so miles south about bad behavior uh, and bad language and bad attitudes. I mean, it's kind of permeated our, our society in many ways. And, and, and as I said, social media and the Internet is a wonderful thing, but it can be used for horrific things, too. It, uh, it's anonymous. It's, it's vile. It's poisonous. Uh, a lot of times, and uh, I've, now I've read stuff about myself, and my mother has read stuff about me on comment pages that you know she calls me about concern. Um, so, but there, we're 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 imperfect people. We're imperfect human beings, all of us, uh, and we have to try to put things in place that will make us the per as perfect as we can be. Commissioner, you said to you answered to an earlier question that. Knowing what you know now, now, I'm sorry, not Commissioner, Mayor, you said earlier, <laughs> <laughs> knowing what you know now, you are okay with the resignation or you feel that that was the right decision? It's, it's his decision. It was his decision. And I think it was the right decision for him. And, and um, I'm, ha I'm happy that he served. I think he's made great progress in the department, has had great uh, things that he had to accomplish and events, and he did them fault. I mean, you could argue that those big public celebrations were flawless in many ways, uh, without any arrests, without any trouble. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just it's time to move on. He's moving on, we're moving on, and we thank him for service. And this is coming from the allegations and the complaint. I know you can't talk a lot about it, but yesterday in your statement, you also said that coming off of these allegations, that this is the right decision. But there are other leadership, and the now commissioner is named in the complaint as well. These are strong allegations. Do you have any concern? And also, what measures 
do you, can you speak of that are being taken place to make sure the department is a safe community and secure community for well, those Well, the sexual now? harassment training and, and, and directive that we put out there, I think, is going to address a lot of these issues. There's ongoing training for supervisors and for police officers in anti-harassment, anti-sexual abuse um, um, training. Um, and um, we're, we're going to do our best to make it better. I mean, I, I'm not going to be, it, it's hard because the questions you're asking are intertwined with the lawsuit that I can't talk about, so. Well, the investigation is the investigation is ongoing. We're going to have a third party investigate, make recommendations. We will have we will have a new commissioner at some point in time, and we will have in place what we need to address these issues. I mean, look, sexual harassment happens every day in every segment of our society, in the private sector, in the public sector, on the streets. I mean, I. I've stopped guys saying, well, what are, you, what are you saying that to that lady, that girl for, that one young woman? What are you, something wrong with you? I mean, so this thing, this stuff is permeates our society, and we have to do our best as a government to keep it from happening to our own employees, and we will do that. But will the leadership the play and the office like, community serving as they do their We cannot discuss the per you know. Yeah, I'll say what the mayor said earlier was that they're just allegations at this point, and um, you know, we're not commenting on the lawsuit, and um, we have a process in place for some independent analysis, and uh, we'll report on that when we make some progress. But the allegations were not for uh, the former commissioner to design. You'll, you'll have to talk to the commissioner about that. I think he gave some statements this morning. Yes. Mayor? Uh, so Ross was your personal pick. I know you guys have worked very closely throughout, so can you talk to me personally, getting this news of after such a hard week you guys spent together after praise that he received from you and nationwide, uh, your reaction to getting the news and then also what you think his legacy will be uh, as commissioner. Well, I was, saddened to hear the, I was saddened to hear his decision. I understood his decision. I accepted his decision. It's a decision. He's, he's a very strong person. He's a very strong and focused person. When he makes a decision, he makes, he makes a decision after a lot of thought. So I, my assumption is, is that a lot of thought went into making that decision. It was not an easy one, not a good, not a good environment for him to make it personally. Uh, but but he, he told me, the first thing he told me, he wanted to do what was right for the department, for the city, and I think he did that, and I still respect him, and I admire him, and I hope he moves on and does great things in the future. Okay, we're going to cut, actually. We're, excuse me, we're at time. We're actually going to cut now. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.